This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we'll be taking a look at path animation, which in a nutshell is the process of having the position of something in a scene being controlled by way of a line that serves as a path or track along which to follow. What follows the path can be an object, a light, a particle system, it makes no difference. The technique you'll use to set things up will be the same in each case. To show you how it's done, I'll be using a file named Teapot Path Animation. You can find it in the Working Files folder for this chapter. The scene is pretty straightforward. It simply consists of a teapot and a line that's been drawn for the purpose of being used as a track or rail for the teapot to follow. What we'll do is inform Max that we'd like to lock the teapot down onto the line. In essence, setting things up so the teapot goes wherever the line goes. In order to do that, we're going to have to change what specifically controls the position of our teapot in the scene. When an object is created, any object, it's assigned a series of what are called controllers that are then used to control or influence that object's position, the way it rotates, and how it specifically scales. In our situation here, it'll be the teapot's position controller that'll need to be changed. In other words, switched to another type of controller in order for the object, the teapot, to be controlled by the path that's been created for it to follow. To make that controller type change, we'll first select the teapot, then head into the Command Panel's Motion tab for a few adjustments. Once in the Motion column, we'll open the first Closed tab. It goes by the name Assign Controller. Once opened, you'll see a list of default controllers that Max has assigned to the teapot. Notice the teapot's position is currently being controlled by something called a Position XYZ controller. We'll need to change that. In order to do that, we'll select the position entry, then click on the icon above and to the left of that position name. The button is labeled Assign Controller. What opens is a list of different controllers that can be used, in this case, to control the position of our teapot. Now, check out the list. Which of these controllers do you think can be used to constrain the teapot to a path? That's what we want to do, right? Well, path constraint probably makes sense. Let's go ahead and select that, then hit OK at the bottom of the dialog. Back in the Motion column, in the list, notice the new controller that's now been loaded onto the position track. With the position controller now changed, we can drop a little farther down in the controls and activate the command that will then allow us to pick the line in our scene as the teapot's path. You'll find that in the section called Path Parameters. Directly below the category heading, you'll see a button that says Add Path. Go ahead and click that, then click on the green line in the scene. You'll see your mouse cursor change to a plus sign when it's identified the line. OK, once you've done that, notice the two keyframes down on the timeline. The teapot's now been animated traveling down the path. We can see that by playing things back. On play, we can see that the teapot has definitely locked onto and is driving down the path, traveling from one end of the line to the other over the length of our timeline. It does, though, appear to be pointing kind of sideways as it makes its journey. What we want is to instead have the teapot rotate or change its orientation as it travels along the curve making it appear to always face forward as it makes its way down the path. We can make that happen by activating the Follow option a little further down in the controls. Let's restart our playback, then find that setting. Now, the teapot is readjusting its orientation along the path, always looking in a forward direction. That direction, if needed, can be adjusted down a little farther in the settings under Axis. Let's change the axis to Y and see what happens. As you can see, the teapot still traveling down the path is now pointing sideways. Let's try the Z axis and see how that looks. Now the object appears to be on edge. Let's go back to X. 
If we want the teapot to travel backwards along the path, there's an option that we can set for that called Flip. You'll find it at the back end of the axis controls. Go ahead and activate that checkbox. Once you've seen the results, let's go ahead and turn Flip back off. You can even have the teapot kind of angle or rotate on its side a bit as it turns its corners by activating an option called Bank. Let's change over to the perspective view so we can better see that. Alt W will take us back to four windows. We'll activate the perspective viewport, then hit Alt W again. Let's return to playing back our animation, and to the right of Follow in the Motion column, we'll activate Bank. To make the banking a little more noticeable, let's change the bank amount to 1. You can see how the teapot now kind of banks or angles into its corners. Let's go ahead and turn Bank back off, and we'll stop our playback. Now, if we wanted the teapot to go somewhere else in the scene, we could simply reshape the path that controls exactly where it's going. Let's do that back in our front view. Scrubbing the timeline, I'm now going to position the teapot somewhere around the middle of its path. OK, to change the shape of the path, we need to have the path selected. Go ahead and click on the line. Now, if you're having a difficult time in doing that, it's because there's a button that's still on over in the Motion column, the Add Path command. We're going to have to turn that off first. With the line now selected, let's go to the Modify column, getting down to the vertex level. We can now select and move any vertex along the path. Playing things back again, you'll now see the teapot traveling in a different direction. Now, here's one. The teapot had to start on one side of the path or the other, then travel to the opposite end. Why did it begin at the top of the line and not instead on the other end? There's got to be a reason, and there is. It has to do with the way the line was originally drawn. You see, a path always starts at the position of the line's first vertex. In other words, where you first clicked to start the curve. See the white vertex on the top left-hand side of the line? That's the shape's first vertex, representing where the line began when it was made. That first vertex position is why the teapot starts where it starts as it travels along the path. Now the first vertex position can be changed, which would then change where the teapot starts or begins along the path. When working with an open line like we have here, the first vertex can only go one other place, and that's going to be at the other end of the curve. If the line was instead closed, you can actually position the first vertex at any vertex. Let's take a look at how you go about changing that first vertex location. Still being in vertex level on the line, we'll window select the vertex on the opposite end. With that now selected, we'll return to the Modify column on the right-hand side, going down to the Geometry section. In the left-hand side of the column, directly below the Connect command, you'll find a command named Make First. Go ahead and click that button. As you do, you'll see the teapot has now reversed direction. Deselecting the selected vertex, you'll notice it's now white in color, representing the first vertex on the line. If we now play things back, the teapot will travel in the opposite direction down the path, starting at the new first vertex, heading down to the other end. So pretty easy how you can change that. Now, how about this scenario? Let's say that the direction of our project changes, and in that, we no longer want our teapot to be controlled by a path. Can it be taken off the path? You bet, but there's a certain technique to do that. Let's go ahead and hold our file real quick in case things don't work. We'll go to the Edit pull-down menu, choosing Hold, or instead opt to use the Control h keyboard shortcut. Maybe the trick to getting the teapot off the path is just to simply delete the line. That would certainly remove the path from being in play. Let's try that. We'll get out of Subobject mode, and with the line still selected, we'll hit Delete on the keyboard. OK, the teapot definitely took a new position in the scene. Let's try moving it around. Trying to change its position, you'll notice that it's still locked down in the scene. Here's why, and it should make sense. Even without a path to follow, 
the teapot is still being controlled by the path constraint controller we put on it, right? So the answer to getting it off the path is not to delete the path, but to instead change the type of controller that's controlling its position. Let's go back and fetch our scene so the path returns to being in play. OK, getting back out of the sub-object level on the line, we can now select the teapot. Let's then return to the motion controls in the command panel. In the Assign Controller section, you'll see the teapot's position is still being controlled by the Path Constraint Controller. Let's click on the position entry in the list, then the Assign Controller button directly above that. Down below the list, you'll see that the default controller on the teapot was the position XYZ. All we simply need to do to break it away from the path is to return to that position XYZ setting. Let's pick that in the list and again say OK. Let's now attempt to move the teapot around. There you go. The teapot's now been broken free of its constraint, being able to be moved wherever we need it to go. Let's right click on the screen, choosing Unhide All. We can then move the teapot directly into the middle of the light blue ring. That's the trick to getting the teapot off the path. So that's the path constraint, something that'll definitely come in handy quite often. Next time you have a project that needs something traveling along a path, now you've got the tool to get the job done.